Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It is Sunday morning, it's about half past eight and we're in for a beautifully sunny day today. The only problem is we have got one hell of a breeze. I've had a little look at the forecast and it's saying gusts of up to 45 miles per hour. And last night that wind really was howling. So I'm a little bit shocked to see that we've still got the poly house intact down here. I've had a little wander around and it does look like that we've lost a few of the staples, but that's a quick, easy fix that we can sort a little bit later on. But today we have got so many jobs that I really must start cracking on with. So yesterday's video, I took you through some of the seeds that I would be sowing in April. So I want to try and get a few of those in the ground today. So I've got a little list of them here that we're going to get in the ground. So we've got some carrots. Now, if you know, um, I did sow some last weekend and two weeks before that, and just nothing seems to be coming up. So we're going to have a go with those. We've got Oxheart and Chantenay. Then we've also got some brassicas. So we've got a kale here that we're going to give a go. We've already got the sprouts, cabbage and broccoli going in a few little pots. But we'll pop those in as well. And also a cauliflower. Now, as I said yesterday, I've never been able to grow these. So if you have, please give us some tips down in the comments below because I'd love to know how I can get the beautiful white florets in the middle. Um, we've got some leaves. So we've got a lettuce here. We'll pop those into some modular trays and pop them in the poly house. Uh, and some peas. Now, I've sown these as well. Um, but I think some rodents or something has found them and they've eaten them up. So we're gonna get a few of these in. These are Rhonda and they are a main crop and they grow quite tall. So we'll need to find somewhere to pop those. We've also got some spring onions. So I'm gonna go for the bulbous mix today. We'll get those out in some of the beds. We've got the leeks. We're gonna pop those into a pot and then later on in the year, I can show you how I dip the holes and get those planted out properly because I don't sow them where they grow. Uh, we've got some beetroot, a good old staple as well. Just the standard what we've got bolt hardy there and also some radishes because they don't seem to be doing too well in the poly house so yeah one of peter rabbit's favorites and then of course you know me we have got some flowers so we're going to try the straw flowers today we're going to get the sweet williams in as well they're a biennial and then one of my favorites are the zinnia. Now we've got quite a few varieties of these. So I'll take you through the different zinnias that we will be sowing today. So yeah, we've got lots that I really must start sowing and we'll get a few of them into the poly house, but quite a few will be sowing directly into the beds. Then on top of the seeds, we've also got loads of seed potatoes that need to be planted out. So I have got the Caledonian Pearl. They're a second early and you want to be planting those out towards the beginning of April, but I mean, you could plant them well into May. So so it's no rush. I've got the blueberry plant that Thompson and Morgan sent to me about a few weeks ago now and I've got some ericaceous compost so we need to find a little spot for that inside the fruit cage and then I also want to try and harvest some of the rhubarb that we've still got left over. As I say I'm going to be picking that for the next few months up until July probably every two to three weeks because we get so much from them. And I'm pretty sure there will be some other little bits and bobs along the way. So you know the drill, let's have a quick cup of coffee and then we better start planting some of these seeds. So before we start sowing any more seeds, I did just want to show you this little tray that we have along here. So in here, we had quite a few flowers. We had the peony poppies, the Californian poppies, amaranthus, some sunflowers, and even some cornflowers. And these have been sitting on the poly house bench for a little while now, and they all came up beautifully. Um, but since then, they've been eaten by slugs and snails. Now the poly house bench is a good meter, meter and a half off the ground. So I have no idea how they've managed to find their way all the way up here. So I must have give this a real good sort out. I'm going to check underneath to make sure that any of the slugs and snails on here are completely gone. Because if I start sowing something in here, they're just going to get eaten again. I mean, the Californian poppies, that's probably my bad. They look like they've just died from the lack of water. So that makes me think I need to start coming up here in the middle of the week to start giving these a bit of a water, which is quite early to be doing that. But that is something that I will start doing. And then we've got the amaranthus that seems to be the only plant that seems to be surviving. So we will keep those pots but everything else we're going to have to get rid of and start again. But it's good, it's okay, because we have got plenty of flowers still to sow. 
Now that wind seems to be getting worse throughout the day, but we're going to carry on and see how we go. So we've got a few different seed trays down here. So we've got the standard seed tray and this has got some holes in and we'll be putting compost straight into here. And then we'll be sowing the flowers probably in here. And as they start to grow, all we need to do is just prick them out and pop them into their own little pots. And then we've also got some modular trays here. So in here we'll be sowing the, uh, the brassicas, so kale, cauliflower, I've got some chard and also some lettuce and we'll just put a couple of seeds per module and we've got a few of those to use up today and then over here we have got a couple of the big pots now I'm going to be using these to sow the leeks because we want our leeks to be growing a really nice long root system before we start pricking these out and putting them into their forever home now I do have a certain way of doing that and I will take you through how we plant out the leeks once we get them. And then finally, we have got some larger module trays here. So these are a bit bigger and I've also got some bigger ones here and I'm gonna use these to sow the peas. Now really, you want to be using some root trainers when it comes to your peas and beans because they really do not like their roots being disturbed. But I'm gonna give these a go and just sow a couple of peas per pot. So all we're gonna do next is just get some compost and we're gonna fill some of these up. Now you could use some proper seed compost which is going to be really fine and it's also low in nutrients because really that seed should carry everything that it needs to get going but I'm just going to use some regular compost give it a good old sieve and honestly that seems to do the trick all the time so let's go get some compost fill these up and then we can start sowing some seeds now when filling up your trays you really want to try and make sure that you leave couple of centimeters from the top just so that when you're watering them the water isn't going to overflow and take some of the seeds with them but you also want to make sure that you're firming it down not too much but give it a good old firm just so that those roots can really anchor into the plant because what I have found in the past that when I haven't firmed them down well enough especially in the modular trays when you then try and pop them up or transfer them they just fall apart in your hand and that can damage some of the roots and then you won't get as good a plant as what you probably could have if you'd given it a good old firm down. So you want to make sure that there's enough soil in there for the roots to get going but just leaving that lip on top just so that the water can stay inside that seed tray. Now I like to get all my compost done first of all because then I don't have to worry about it and then we can see if we need any more for when it comes to sprinkling on top and depending on the size of, size of your seed depends on how much compost you want to put on top some don't need any at all and that's for the really diddly little seeds that you can get they say that you want to plant your seeds two depths as what it is in size a bit similar to how you um plant your tulip bulbs and your other spring bulbs you can always use the other seed tray just to flatten it on top and we'll do the same with this one so they're nice and ready for the flowers which we'll do in just a moment so we'll pop those down here and now we'll do the modular trays I was watching Beach Grove the other night, I think it was Friday night before um, Gardener's World, and I was listening to, I think his name's Brian, and he was saying when you water your seedlings, it's better to use tap water rather than using water from the water butt, which I didn't know. So we're going to give that a go today. We've got mains water down here on the plot. Supposedly there can be bacteria in the water which can affect your seedlings when they first get going. So you learn something new every day. Now when you're filling your modular trays, don't forget you will be putting a little sprinkle on top as well. And again, you don't want it to be right up to the top because you don't want the water to run off. So don't fill them up too high. Right, so they're ready for the brassicas when we get them sewn in a moment. I'm definitely glad that I got a new microphone because I'm telling you, you would not be able to hear me today with the row that wind is making. It is really quite dusty. I've already, the 
tripod's already flown over and I've cracked my screen ever so slightly, but luckily I've got one of those protectors on it. So I don't think it's caused too much damage. But it was always a matter of time. Now these are quite big, so this might take quite a bit of compost. And these are going to be for the peas. All right, so they're all ready for when the peas go in. Pop them down here. Let's collect some of this compost. Oh, we've got a slug there. Let's get rid of him. I don't want to waste all of this compost, so try and collect as much as possible. This one's going to be for the leeks. Then we'll do one more as well. Right, so let's make sure that we have got enough pots for everything. So we have got one, two trays for the zinnias and the straw flowers. So that should be enough. Then we have got one, two, three, we've got six modules each for the lettuce, the cauliflower, the chard, and the kale. And we'll pop a couple of seeds per those. We've got a couple of the uh, pots for the leeks. We've got the pots ready for the peas. And I did want to sow just a couple of these bottle gourds. Now I think I'm going to need some small pots, but individual pots. Um, so we'll go and grab a couple of those. So I've just found some diddly little pots here. And I'm just going to sow one of the bottle gourd seeds per each pot. And hopefully they should do all right. And if I do see any frost in the forecast, I'm going to have to run down here and make sure that I bring these home. Right, so we have got all our seed trays, modular trays, pots, all filled with some compost now. Now I'm just going to give these all a really good soak in and then I must write on some labels so that we know what's in what because I will forget. And I, that is my promise this year is I need to keep on top of my labeling. So yes, I'm going to fill up a watering can with some of the tap water following Brian's advice on this one. And we'll give these all a really good soaking in so that the seeds have got a nice little bed to get their roots in once they've germinated. Right, so we've given them all a good old soak in. Now it's time to actually start planting some of these seeds up. So I think we're going to start off with the peas. So I've got these here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do two per module and I'm going to try and put them at either side so they're as far away as possible from each other. And hopefully they should have enough space to get their roots in there. And then as soon as they start to get an inch tall, that's when I will start planting them out into their beds. So we'll get a couple of these in each of these modules. Now, some people do like to soak their peas beforehand to make sure that they are going to germinate. And all you need is a couple of pieces of wet towel and maybe a container. And you just want to cover them in some of that wet towel and just keep them moist. So keep spraying them with a little bit of water. And eventually you'll notice a little bit of a root come out and that's when you can start to plant them. But hopefully these should be fine. I've never done that before and maybe that is where I'm going wrong. So we'll try one more time the old school way as I've been doing it for years. But then if this doesn't work, I'm definitely going to try germinating them at home before we start planting them out. Hopefully the little rice the little mice and rats aren't going to find these in the poly house. Now two per pot is going to give me 36 plants, which probably isn't enough to even make a couple of people a meal. But they'll certainly be a nice little snack whilst I'm down here on the plot. Peas never seem to come home with us. Because there's just not enough to be able to make a substantial meal. So once we've got these sewing, we will put a little sprinkling of compost on top and then we will give them another good old soak in just to make sure that those seeds get nice and wet, which will start them off to germinate. It's a real shame about that wind because I'm a little bit worried with all the blossom that's out at the moment. If that all blows off, then we might not get many apples and pears on our trees. It is literally blowing all over the plot. I've got cherry trees, the wild cherry. I think they're called bitter cherries and they're absolutely beautiful. They're in full bloom, so you don't really eat them. I think you can make some sort of syrups and stuff with them to sweeten them up a little bit, but I don't tend to pick them. I tend to leave them for the little birds. 
But yeah, the blossom is blowing all over the place. On the pear trees and the apple trees, they still seem to be on there. So hopefully they will get pollinated before it all starts to blow off. So there we go. That is what I mean, just on the diagonal. You can see that I've got them in each of the corners. Now I probably could have squeezed in another seed, but I just don't want to try my luck too much. So we'll give them a little covering up with some compost and another good old soak, but I'll wait to water them all at the same time. So we'll just pop these guys down there for now. I need to sieve a little bit more compost first because they seem to have ran out. So we'll just stick them down there and we'll sow a few more seeds. So I've just been talking to myself for the last five minutes, not realizing that I hadn't pressed record. So we're gonna try that again. So down here, we have got the modular trays. So we've got four rows of six, and in here we are gonna put the lettuce. So these are really diddly seeds. So I'm probably gonna end up with about five seeds per module, but they'll be fine. I can always thin them out if needs be. Then we've got some chard. I'm probably going to put three seeds per module for these guys because they can be multi-sown together, so they'll do fine. And then finally, we've got the two brassicas. We've got the kale black magic and also the cauliflower, which is owl's mere. So first of all, we're going to start off with the chard. Now, I've already sown a few of these in here. I've sown three per module. Now, they're very similar to a beetroot, other than the beetroot you obviously eat for the root that they grow, whereas the chard is grown for... The leaves i believe they come from the same family and the seeds look almost identical they almost look like tiny little com comets they're, they're quite sweet little seeds so we're just going to pop three in each of these modules and they will do fine when i plant them out they'll grow together quite well and i do find that sometimes these seeds do stick together and you get a couple of plants come from what you think is one seed anyway so we'll just plant three of these in each of these now I say that you eat the beetroot for its roots, but you can eat the beetroot leaves as well. They're quite nice in a salad. But the chard, yeah, they're grown specifically for their leaves. So there we go. We've got three per module for the chard and we'll stick the other seeds back in this packet. So next we have got the lettuce. Now, as I say, these are really diddly tiny seeds. So I probably won't be able to not put many in because they are so small and you get so many seeds per packet. I think you get like 500 and there's no way I'm gonna eat 500 lettuce. So we'll just sprinkle these on ever so slightly. It's a little bit windy down here. So I'm a bit worried that these are gonna fly around. So do go careful. So just because of how diddly they are, I have probably ended up with about seven or eight in each of these modules, but it's okay. We can thin them out at a later stage. And because they're so diddy, we will just lightly cover them with some compost, not as much as the others, and just go very careful when we give them a water. Got seeds flying all over the place because of the wind. Right, where has the, uh, there we go, cauliflowers fell down here and the kale I tucked behind there. So we'll start with the kale. Now you'll find that all brassica seeds look very similar, almost like they're very similar to a radish seed. They're all part of the same family. And we're just gonna pop two of these in each of the corners, similar to what we just done with the peas. Now we haven't got many seeds in here, so it might be that we just need to use these up. So I think we're going to go for a little bit more than two just because we might as well use these seeds and then we'll just prick out any that are the weaker ones at a later stage. Again, these are really diddly seeds, so they're not going to need a huge amount of compost on top. And then finally, we have got the cauliflower. As I say, I've never been able to grow these before. They grow, as in I get the leaves, but I don't get the beautiful white head in the middle. Again, you don't get many seeds, so we'll probably do more than the two. Ended up with about five in that one. And you don't want them being right next to each other because that will be a little bit difficult to thin out at a later stage. So don't be too worried about getting your fingers in there and moving them around ever so slightly. We've even got some seeds spare 
just in case. Again, we'll pop those with the kale. Now, where's my pen gone? I will just write on these so I know. So that's a collie. And that's a kale. So they are the brassicas, the lettuce, and the chard, all sown. And we'll give them a sprinkle up with some compost in just a moment. So I'll pop these down with the peas. And then in here, we're going to sow some of the gourds. Now these are quite large seeds, so they're gonna to need to be buried quite deep. If I just show you, there you go. They're quite big seeds. Now I don't wanna sow them all, just in case it is a little bit too early and I want some spare as backup. So we'll probably sow some more in May and then some more in June and we can see which ones do best. So we'll just pop one in the middle. Now I am putting it on its side because if I lay it flat, it's got a lot more surface area and it's got a chance of rotting in that soil. So do try and put it down on its side. We'll just pop that right in the middle. And we'll give that a really good covering up because they are quite large. I've never grown these before, but I have seen people dry out bottle gourds and then you can use them to sort of carry water and all sorts. Now, I don't know whether I'd use it much, but I just want to be able to say I grew my own bottle. And I love growing sort of new exotic plants as well. These are a climber, so I will need to find somewhere to pop these and they will need full sun once they get going. So I'm hoping the poly house is going to be warm enough for these guys. So there we go, they are the three gourds done. Pop them down here. All right, flowers or leeks? Let's stick to the vegetables. So we'll do the leeks in here. Now I'm just gonna scatter these on top. And we'll probably put, they can be really closely packed in here because we're going to eventually tease them out into individual plants and pop them into their beds. So it doesn't matter too much if they are tightly packed in here. So I'm probably gonna put anything from 15 to 20 in each one and they'll be absolutely fine, I promise you. And then once they get to sort of pencil thickness, that's when we can start putting them out into the beds. So we've got Leon, which is French prize taker. You normally get quite a few seeds in here, very similar to an onion seed. So they're those black, almost triangular shaped, and they just ping across all over the place when you start to sew them in. So do go careful, you don't want to lose too many of them. Sprinkle them on top. Now, because they are black, you can't really see where they land in the soil. But like I say, it doesn't matter too much because you can overcrowd these at the moment. Probably gone for about 20 in that pot and we'll do the same in this one as well. Right, so let's stick them down there with all their other vegetable friends and then we'll do the flowers. So we've got zinnias and straw flowers left. So I need to find something to break that in half because I'm going to have straw flowers on one side and then we're going to have zinnias on the other and then this one at the back is just going to be full of zinnias as well. So what we got down here, here we go, bit of an old branch from the pear tree we've got laying around hopefully that will be long enough there we go and we'll just stick that in the middle there so i know what side's what so we'll start off with the straw flowers i've tried these year on year and i love them because you dry them out and you can use them for little crafty bits not that i'm overly crafty but i'd like to find some little use for them now I've still got quite a few seeds in here, so we're going to sow all of these. These are a packet that were left over from last year. And the seed packet says we've got until 2026, so they should be all right. So we'll just lightly sprinkle these on top. Now it is very windy, so I've got to be quite careful that they don't fly around and land in the zinnia half. I really must stay on top of the watering so I will start popping down here during the week to make sure that these guys don't dry out. And then once they start to get their true leaves, that's when we can think about 
planting them up into their own little pots. Now we have got the zinnias. So we've got an Oklahoma mixed, which is quite a colorful one. We have got the sombrero, which is red and yellow. That's quite a pretty one. And then this is my favorite. It's called purple Prince, Prince, which is that beautiful deep purple. So I'm just gonna sort of mix these around. I might put the purple Prince in their own one over here, and then I'll certainly know which one is the sombrero and which one is the Oklahoma mix when it comes to these guys. I will do one half and one in the other, but I'm not too fussed about putting a stick down the middle. Now these I did have good success with a couple of years ago, but I haven't tried growing them since. And these are quite large seeds. So the Oklahoma will go in here. And just by wetting that soil, it just makes sure that those seeds stick and they don't start flying away, which is definitely helpful in these high winds today. I might have a bit of trouble when it comes to planting out some of the seeds in the beds, especially the carrots, because they will just fly. That's the Oklahoma. Still got plenty of seeds left, so I'll look after those for next year. Then we'll try the sombrero. Might as well use them up. And then finally, we have got the purple print zinnia. We'll try these in here. Now I think you can direct sow these straight out into the ground. But I'm not too sure where I want them yet. And there's still plenty of flowers to start germinating from the pot marigold, calendula, uh, the cosmos, we've got all sorts. So yeah, I don't want to start digging around just yet. So I'll start these guys off in the trays. And there we go. They are all the seeds done. So I'm just going to pop all the trays back up on here now. And then, oh, it is definitely blowing around today. We can start sprinkling some compost on top and give them their final water before popping them into the poly house. Right, so I've sieved a little bit more compost for us to cover some of these seeds up. So the smaller seeds, we're just going to put a very fine amount of compost on top. And then the bigger ones, we'll put a little bit more on. Firm down as well. Very slight little firm. Don't be too hard. Don't want to damage the little seeds. I have given this a good old sieve but do watch out for any big chunky bits because if you get a big old chunk of bark or something lay on top of the seedling then there's no way that that is going to germinate. So there we go, we've given them all a nice little covering of some compost. Now we just need to give them another water. Now you could dip these into a sort of water bath and let them water from the bottom up, or you can give them a good old sprinkle. I just wouldn't use a normal watering can because the force of the water might be a little bit too hard and you might wash all of your seedlings off, which is the last thing you want. So I'm just gonna use that tiny little bottle thing that I've got, it was off Amazon, a couple of quid, and that just makes sure that I can just give it a very light sprinkle and the seeds should stay in place. So it will be the water and the heat that makes the seed think, right, now it's time to start germinating. And it will send out that root to begin with, and then next it will start to form its little stem and the first couple of seed leaves. So there we go, there are all the today seeds sown and watered. Now we just need to go and find them a little home in the Pony House, so come on.
Now I don't think, oh yep, yeah, you can see the tail of the newt just moved just then. I want him to come out properly so that you can see him. Oh, he's definitely going somewhere, but I'm not too sure where. Oh, there's his head, if you can see. He's just come up for a little bubble of air. Hey. This pond is full of life. I have noticed I haven't got quite as many tadpoles in here this year. I'm not too bothered if I've got this little newtie in here. There we go. He's right in the centre there. You can see him having a little walk through. Now we did have loads of newt babies in here last year, so I'm hoping that a few of them have stayed in and possibly mated. And hopefully we'll get some more newt babies in here this year. Right, so next we are going to plant out some more potatoes. I was going to do some sowing in some of the beds today, but it's a little bit too windy. So I'm going to leave the carrots, uh, the spring onions, radishes, beetroot until the middle of the week. I might pop down here after work. I should be able to bring you guys along with me, but the potatoes, they're definitely ready to go in. So if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we did sow our first earlies where we planted out the potatoes and down in these tubs here, we have got the international kidney, also known as a Jersey Royal. You can't call it that unless it's on the Isle of Jersey. But today we're going to be going in with our second early potatoes and these are called Caledonian Pearl. And you want to be getting your second earlies in probably from the beginning of April to the beginning of May. You can plant them out successionally so that you've always got that crop of potatoes. But today we're going to go in with these and plant these out. Now, in my last video, I don't think I explained the difference between the two types of potatoes you can get on top of your first second and main crop. So they're a relative of the tomato plant. And if you know about tomatoes, you can get indeterminate and determinate uh, tomatoes and you get the same with your potatoes. And what that means is, is your indeterminate potatoes, they will grow at multiple different layers. So it's a really good idea to make sure that you earthen them up and you might want to plant them a little bit deeper than you would your determinate. And they will just grow potatoes just above where you've planted them just in one single layer. Now I don't know the difference with all of my potatoes and I haven't done the research to be fair. So I treat them all as indeterminate in the hope that they're gonna grow in all these different layers. So I just plant them quite deep and then I do just keep on adding the soil on top because the last thing you want is any of your potatoes catching the sunlight because as soon as you get the sunlight on your potatoes they start to turn green and green potatoes are poisonous which means you cannot eat them. So I hope I've cleared that up a little bit with the indeterminate and determinate potatoes that you can get. So if you do have a few different varieties it's always a good idea just to have a little bit of a google before you start planting them but as I say I treat them all as indeterminate and I put them quite deep and I do pile the soil on top and I've never really had a problem with them. So yes, today we're gonna to pop in the Caledonian Pearl, same as the first earlies that we planted in here, depending on the size of the, seeds, the seed potato, we'll put anything from three to five in these pots because these are quite big. And in these ones, we did have some of the rabbit uh, bedding. So that's gonna be full of nutrients. Whereas the ones at the back, they haven't. So we're just gonna add some compost, some chicken manure pellets, and probably some bone meal as well, just so that there's plenty of nutrients in that soil for the potato. So come on, let's get these planted up. So before I plant them, I do just pop them onto the soil level to make sure that I've got plenty in here. Now these are quite big, so we will probably go with four in this pot and I do find the more you put in there you'll just get more smaller potatoes which is fine with the salad potatoes but not so much for the main crop you want some big potatoes for those so I'll plant those out a little bit differently but we've still got a few more weeks before the main crop go out so we'll just plonk these in each of the pots and then once they're all out we can start digging them in properly I like to get rid of the big chunky ones first and then we can always find a home for the smaller ones. Just do go careful if you've been chitting your potatoes that you don't rub off some of the, the little sprouts that have started to form on there because that is where your potatoes are gonna start growing from.
So just here, we have got the sprouts, the cabbage, the broccoli, and also some onions. Now the problem is, I've left these outside, but I think the pigeons or some bird is coming down and having a little bit of a nibble, and it's too hot in the poly house to keep them in there. So I need to find a little spot for these and make some sort of cage or some form of protection around them. Now you do have the cabbage white butterfly. I've already seen a few of them flying around, but they're probably not ready to lay their eggs just yet. So I'm not too fussed about the butterflies getting to them and I will just check on them each time I pop down here for any little yellow eggs on the back of the leaves. So I'm just going to find somewhere and create some form of little cage just so that they're protected and they're getting plenty of sunlight but also that they're not getting too hot in the poly house. So yeah that is the next little task. So there we go we've got them in their own little brassica jail down here. I've just used a couple of old bamboo canes which have snapped and I've wedged them in and then I've just used some of this metal grid that I had for one of the shelving units years ago and that should protect them from the birds at least and then in the next few weeks we'll get these planted out properly in a proper brassica cage and we'll use some proper butterfly netting just to make sure the cabbage whites can't get to them. Now down here we have got a blueberry plant. If you remember quite a few months back Thompson and Morgan sent me a free one in the post. Now it only arrived a couple of weeks ago and it's still in its same pot so I really need to think about planting it up. Now I thought that I had quite a bit more ericaceous compost than what I do so I haven't got enough to fill a proper tub so we're just going to pop it into this little pot for the time being. Now this isn't any blueberry. The actual berries are a pink colour and I believe it's called pink sapphire. Now I'm going to pot it up today and we've got some ericaceous compost and all that means is is that it's more acidic than what it is alkaline because these plants do love a good old acid soil. Uh, blueberries aren't the only plant that like acids. You've got rhododendrons, azaleas, uh, Japanese maples, heathers, rhododendrons and I think even some magnolias also like an acid soil. So I'm just going to plant this up in here today and then once I've got some more I'm going to get a bigger tub for it and then we can put it in the fruit cage just to make sure that the birds don't get to the berries before I do. So I've just had it soaking in this water for a good couple of hours just to make sure that that root ball is nice and hydrated before we pot it up. I mean this compost is quite wet anyway so it should be all right. So we'll plant it up then we'll just give it a little sprinkling of water just to make sure that the soil is settled around its roots and then I am just going to pop it in the fruit cage probably in with all the other blueberries until we can get some more compost and plant it up properly. Now that's got quite a healthy root system on it already. They're quite fibrous roots and it's the fibrous roots where it soaks up all of those water rather than the chunkier ones. Now you want to bury it at the same height as what it was in the pot and you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of room around the top of the pot to make sure that when you water it, it is stay it's keeping the water in and it's not all overflowing from the top. So we'll just cover this guy up. Give it a shake to make sure all that soil gets around its roots. And it should be a lot happier once it's got a bit of more nutrients. I mean, it looks like quite a healthy plant anyway. So thank you, Thompson and Morgan, I should say. Now, I'll let you know what they taste like, whether they taste anything like the blueberries. I imagine that they do. And it should just be the colour. Good firm down, make sure those roots are nicely intact with the soil and then I will make sure that I water it with some of the water from the water butt because that will be a little bit more acidic than what's coming out of the taps at the moment. Now if you do have some acid loving plants and you're finding that the leaves are turning yellow it's probably because it's not getting enough acid so do make sure that you get an ericaceous feed and just give it that every now and then and it should soon start to bounce back. Right, we'll give him a little water and pop him in the fruit cage.
So that is all we've got time for today, folks. I'll tell you what, the nature really has cranked up. We've got that little newt in the pond. I'm noticing butterflies all over the place, all different sorts, and also the bees in that cherry blossom. I've got the bumblebees, the honeybees, and there's so many different types of bees that I've seen flying around today. And it won't be long before we start getting the dragonflies, the mayflies, and all other insects around that pond. And then the birds really do just top it off. I love this time of year and all the nature that we get down here on the plot. Now we've managed to sow quite a few seeds today. We didn't sow anything in the beds directly, but I'm hoping to get down here at some point during the week and we'll sow some of the radishes, the beetroot, uh, carrots, and also some spring onions directly into the bed. Now, if you are worrying that you haven't got enough time, don't rush it. You've got to enjoy your garden and we've still got plenty of more months before we even start to go into the beginnings of summer. So honestly, relax and enjoy the garden where you can. Now I'm hoping that next weekend we're going to have this beautiful sunshine minus the wind because it has been quite gusty today. I thought I was going to lose you in the pond at one point. So yeah, fingers crossed it's going to be a nice sunny one next weekend and I'll be back down here for another little adventure down on the plot. So I hope you've had a lovely weekend wherever you are in the world, but I hope you have a better week ahead of you and I'll see you all very soon. So take care guys and I'll see you later. Bye bye.